All right, everybody, welcome to the first ever Plotting for Success podcast. I'm one of your hosts, Brett Smith, and on the other end is Doug Castreva. How's it going, Doug? It's going wonderful, Brett. Glad to get this thing up and rolling. Yeah, so this is something that Doug and I have been planning for how long already? Oh, it's been a long time, you know, but, uh, I, you know, sometimes you, patience is always a virtue, and it turned out to be probably a perfect timing now. You know, a lot of people are kind of getting up and going, and it feels like it's that time of year where plotting has been nuts. And, you know, so it's all good in management, and people are worrying about their deer, and what are we going to do this year? And a lot of people have a lot of idle time on their hands. So this is all perfect timing. It really is. Yeah, absolutely. Like I said, I mean, food plotting season's kind of already started for those spring plots and things like that. And I brought up the name plotting, plotting for success for this podcast. I mean, we're going to definitely hit food plots, especially right now, because that's what's going on in the world. I mean, that's in the deer world. You know, it's, it's that time of year, but this podcast is going to be everything. So um, with that being said, like I said, my name is Brett Smith. This is Doug Kostrev on the other end. So Doug's the owner of Horny Buckseed. I'm the owner of Whitetail Land Management Services. Why don't we just break it down for the people? Let's pretend nobody knows who we are. Go ahead and break it down, Doug. I mean, what is Horny Buckseed? You know, give us the whole story. How did, well, how did it start and everything? Yeah. I'll make it kind of as short as I can because I'll be talking for an hour. Otherwise, sure. I don't know if they want to do that. But uh, uh, many, many years ago, I was approached. Uh, I had a landscaping company at the time, and I was approached by a lot of my customers that wanted to start watching deer behind their house. Um, and I started helping them, teaching them what to plant and when to plant it. And I started planting different uh, brassicas and different things for them at that time. This is probably almost 10, 12 years ago. Uh, probably over that already. And um, as it kind of grew, well, the neighbor tells a neighbor, and, you know, like everything that turns out great, it's usually, you know, uh, word of mouth, so to speak. Um, and then it started to take off. And then I was planting more and more and more food plots. And then I was buying, you know, commercial seed, buying seed at feed mills. I was doing all of this stuff. And. Uh, third generation farmer. I'm living on the same farm that my grandparents built back in the 20s. So um, for me personally, I thought to myself, I'm like, you know what? I know how to grow stuff. Why isn't a lot of this stuff growing well? Um, then I had to do a lot of research and I found out that there's a lot to seed. It's not just uh, you go to your feed mill and you buy some seed and it works. Um, seed is all about freshness. So your fresher your seed is, you know, better your quality your seed is, your better chances you got. You're, you're going through all the effort. Uh, why don't you do it right? So, well, then I decided, I, I ran into a couple of different guys who were actually seed gurus, I call them. And we start talking about germination and quality and, and plant vigor and, and proteins and different this and different that. And I started to learn the difference in quality seed. Well, then it kind of started to take off into the matter of, okay, well, I'm going to start blending this. So what does a deer eat? Well, I was fortunate enough to get in, actually asked by uh, several different deer farmers if I would help them because deer farmers, just because they're a deer farmer doesn't make them a farmer. So I had to kind of like teach them and I, and, and I had to learn. So I had to teach them how to grow things and then I had to learn what a deer ate. So it, it kind of all kind of, we, it was kind of like the perfect storm um, for me. Um, and then, you know, we established the Horny Buck Seed. Um, my wife named a company and I thought she was absolutely nuts because I wasn't going to call it Horny Buck Seed. Sure. Um, there's no way I was going to do that. And um, I got a true story. I got up three o'clock one morning because I'm not a big sleeper. I only get about four or five hours a night if I'm lucky. And I got on a computer and this is probably over 12 years ago looking up. Actually, we're kind of a a fun based family, uh, love mm -hmm. to laugh and have fun, life is short. I went online and I started looking for, um, you know, what is out in the outdoor industry that's got a cartoon character? And there really wasn't any, everything was skull and crossbones, you know, yeah. and skull and antlers, or skull and this and skull and that. And um, I grew up in this era, so you know, I Lee, Coyote, and Foghorn, Lakehorn. Um, anyway, short story long, I went to my brother, who's a graphic artist, and I told him, I said, I'm gonna start up my own seed company. And he, he looked at me and he said, I said, it. And I said yeah, and he says, uh, what are you going to call it? And I said, Horny Buck Seed. And he looked at me and he said, you're serious. I said, believe it or not, yeah, I am. And I didn't, wasn't going to, but Alice kind of talked me into it. And uh, I, he said, so what do you need? I says, I'm looking for a cartoon character. And uh, I said, I wanted you to create Horny the Buck. And 
so he did. He created Horny, a 14-point buck, and um, it just kind of, you know, took off from there. Um, and, you know, it, it, just like any business, it's growing pains. A lot of people didn't take us serious because they thought it was just a novelty thing. We sold a lot of clothing, and I mean a lot of clothing. Sure. And, uh, and we still do. In fact, that order just came in yesterday. Um, we still go through a lot of clothing, but, it, but people started to plant the product and I started doing seminars and explain to people how to, and I think that's where Brett, this podcast, these podcasts that we're going to do are going to help the public, um, yeah. because we're going to train and educate. And, and that is what I was really excited about. Cause that's what you kind of drove me into, you know, this is what we should do. We should educate the public because my phone pretty much rings or texts nonstop. And um, I decided, you know, as we grew the business, I did not know where it was going to go. But right now we're shipping seed to 29 different states. Uh, we ship lots of it. Um, and we hooked up with some great companies along the way. And we tried to explain to people, you know, on, on, on you know, how do you do soil samples and how important is that? And these are all blogs that we're going to touch on yeah. through these series that we're going to end up doing. Yep. And I think that's what I got really excited about. So. You know, as a company, I felt that this was going to be like a good fit for us. And, you know, I was kind of getting you and I together and we've been doing this for over 10 years and, and, and you do your little thing on a side, which is cool and it's growing yeah. for you. And this is all things. So you can tell me a little bit about, or tell us a little bit about what your goals are and where you're at. And we can all kind of conjoin, uh, coexist and kind of work together on things. Yeah. So like I said, I own a company called Whitetail Land Management Services, which is basically a habitat management company where I travel around the country, go pe help people design properties to get the most out of their properties. Obviously, I wanted to link up with you because food plots, I mean, if you don't have the food, you don't have the deer, especially if you're in an agricultural area and the crops go out, then what's left? Natural browse, things like that. So that's why I wanted to team up with you and just go over, especially starting this podcast, go over some of the the simple things that people overlook. I mean, if people would just follow a lot of these simple steps, they'd have a lot more success with food plots, deer management, habitat management, all these things. So like I said, I wanted to link up with you, Doug, just because I feel like we could really reach people and just put this all on the platform so that people could come to this podcast, you know, get the food plotting, the, the, the timber stand improvement, all those different things. And it's here. I mean, here's a video of it. Here's a step by step. And that's what we're going to do, especially with everything going on right now. Food plots, food plots is what's going on. I mean, this, this is what time of the year it is. I mean, deer management and all those other things we can talk about as, as time goes on, timber stand improvement, uh, things like that, all these different hunting tactics. And we've talked about having, you know, quite a few different um, guests on and, and we'll, we'll hit all those topics. But right now, food plots is kind of what's going on. So um, obviously spring has kind of come and gone. If you didn't get your spring plots in, you're kind of late to the party. Um, so I guess, you know, I guess with this intro kind of concluding, we can kind of get into that stuff. So, um, you know, the first thing I'll ask you, you're, you're, you're the expert, you know, when it comes to food plots, like I said, you've been doing this food plot thing. How, how long have you been doing food, food plots before, before horny buck seed was a thing? How long would you say you've been doing food plots? Well, I kind of feel I started it out before it was even cool. Um, sure. I think I planted my very first food plot when I was 18, and I'm 52, so you can do some pretty simple math. Um, and my dad said I was an idiot. And sure. at the time, I was, uh, because I didn't know what I was doing. And yeah. I was giggling because I knew deer love carrots. Now, mind you, that's what I was going to ask you. I, I was going to say, what, what, like back then, what, what was the... It was carrots. I mean, and, and I mean, I was laughing because, you know, I told him, I said, I put in a, I put in a, you know, it, like it was less than a quarter acre because carrot seed was expensive. And when you're 18 years old, you know, yeah. you don't have a ton of money. And uh, I planted a bunch of carrots and I'm weeding them stupid carrots during the summer. And I'm like, what an idiot down in a food plot, mind you, food plot, okay? <laughs> And uh, then all of a sudden, okay, it froze, right? You know, winter came, well, fall came, and it froze. And I'm sitting over there, and I'm like, how are these deer going to pull out all these carrots? There's just no way, you know? <laughs> so I went down there with a fork, and I dug a quarter acre of carrots up with a fork, you know? And and that's where it kind of started, um, you know? And then, you know, then you get into your clovers, and then, but I, as a nutritionist for beef, I kind of want to know what the deer are eating. So yeah. 
I get into that a little bit more in depth. I want to know what the proteins are, where their carb intake is, what does a deer need to survive through the winter. You know, in antler growth, it all starts, and I explain this to everybody, it all starts at a fawn. It all yeah. starts with your does. And, and people only look at a deer and look at antlers or horns, whichever you want to call it, okay? Sure. And, and, and that is just the minor of it. That's just the minor of it. So, you know, there, if you got to get your does and your fawns healthy, you got to give them everything that they need to survive, and people don't understand that. They yeah, just they, think, they, you know, they, the antlers come second. The body yes. has to be taken care of. The nutrition yes. has to be up there. And yes. then the antlers come. Yeah. I know right, you're... right. You know, and I, and I try to, and I emphasize on nutrition back to mineral. Mineral is, to me, just as crucial as any plant you're going to put in the ground. You know, and you hit it on, you hit on agricultural. And I get this uh, so many times from customers. I ain't putting in a food plot. You know, there's, there's, there's corn and beans out there. And I said, so are you leaving them? Mm -hmm. Well, no, a farmer never does. I said, okay. So when the farmer comes and harvests them, what did he got? Oh, never thought of that. You know, well, it's reality. You know, deer, it, you, can, it, it, you can keep deer on your property and you do not need a lot of food source. The problem that people don't understand is that old adage, if you build it, they will come. Mm -hmm. And people don't understand that because I've had how many customers that I've helped through the years that, well, I only got a half an acre space. Well, and that's fine. It's a good start. Nothing wrong with that. And I said, you, how's your deer density? Well, I don't know. I've got quite a few. And I'm like, well, it ain't going to sustain them. And they're like, what do you mean? I said, it'll be gone. And then where did they go? Um, now, mind you, back to the management <laughs> part of it, when you start feeding deer and you start, and I'm talking, you know, growing product for deer you know deer are lazy mammals and that's what i try to i can never overemphasize that enough with my customers mm -hmm. deer really don't care about much you right. know i mean it is really eating drinking they're worried about predators and screwing that's basically their whole life to it yeah they're 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 not a really a sophisticated animal they're mm -hmm. you know they're, they're worried about is somebody going to come out and get me whether it be a coyote a wolf a bear or a human being whatever okay they're worried about that taking it's all care about of survival baby. yeah it's survival that's it they don't you know they don't they're, they're, you know they you know and you know you know bigger bucks you know what gets a big buck smart <laughs> go look in the mirror <laughs> you did it yeah. you know i mean you know deer as 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 a, i'm not saying that they're dumb but they're 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 simple they're simple very simple mammals but yeah. they're and they're easy to grow and they're easy to maintain they're easy to keep on your property um, you know, and I mean, I know there's neighbor issues and I know there's, you know, there's every, and we'll touch on all of those yeah, things in exactly. all these podcasts, uh, but there is so many things that I think the public as a whole just don't understand. And, 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 that, and that's the thing you, you brought up, you brought up the food plot thing. And a lot of people, like I said, it, it's, it's a simple concept. I mean, if you, if you, you think about it from the agricultural standpoint, we'll go back to that for a bit. You know, people are harvesting their crops mid fall then what? You know, one, you've got nothing to hunt, but think past that. From a nutritional standpoint, deer have nothing but natural browse. And let's say you're up in the northern third of the country, what browse really is there once you're up in northern Wisconsin and you've got these harsh winters and things like that? So even put the hunting aside, by having food plots and supplemental feed and all these different things that we can do, you're helping them basically rebound for the next year. And especially think, think from a buck standpoint, the quicker they rebound, what happens? The quicker the antlers grow, the bigger the deer. It's a simple process. And I think a lot of times people try to make it this ridiculous science, you know, and maybe it's yeah. a gimmick. And maybe it's a gimmick for pe some people like they got the, they cracked the code, you know, whatever it was. Um, this works better than this. It's a simple process. I mean, if you, if you only ate good for six to nine months out of the year, well, the other three months, especially in the harshest part of the year, it's going to be a struggle. And then you yeah. got to bounce back. So if you're a bodybuilder, and you don't take care of yourself, think about it from that standpoint. You don't take care of yourself for three months. You're not going to be able to just pick up where you left off. You know, in, in this case, you know, November is when a lot of deer, they'll lose up to 30% of their weight running around during the rut. So if all of a sudden you didn't, you didn't feed yourself as a bodybuilder, let's say, after that standpoint, you can't expect to just pick up where you left off in spring. So that's a huge part of this too. Is, that, is Like I said, we're going to be hitting food plots for, for the next couple of weeks at least here. 
um, with the, with this podcast because that's what's going on right now. And and that's something I don't think I don't think anybody. I mean, a lot of people just don't they they overthink it. It's 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 a simple concept, and I think people just overthink it. And it's it's a huge part, you know, when it comes to diet and all those other things beside harvesting deer. Well, and I and I try to explain that to customers. You kind of nailed a lot of things right where the direction we need to go in. You know, people don't understand how much a deer consumes in a year. They don't understand what they consume in a year. And you know, and you said harsh winters. You know, you know, deer deer don't do good on snowballs. Okay, uh, they just don't. Um, you know, and, and I found, and many of our customers, and I've got oodles of them that call me in the fall. Mm-hmm. You know, they tell me right out, man, I live in. I start. Here's a prime example. I have a customer out in central Wisconsin. Um, couldn't grow a food plot for. And this, and I met him at a show in Milwaukee, of all places, and it was like at least ten years ago when we first started. Yep. Um, and he said, "I've been trying to plant food plots for five years, and I can't get one." I said, "You ever do a soil test?" Boom. Well, What's that? Yeah. What's that? Okay. Yeah. So, moral of the story is he started out with a half an acre, half an acre. He started out with. Um, I got him to perfect that half an acre. Now he's planting sixteen acres just of food for his deer. Um, and that's corn and beans with it, okay? Sure. But he plants, I think, about on an average of five, six acres of greens for his deer every year. Okay. And on an average sit, he'll see 40 deer when back, you know, 12 years ago, on an average sit, he was lucky if he'd seen one. And he said, I, you totally transformed my farm. Now, I've also taught him how to hunt it wisely. Sure. Uh, he don't gun hunt okay. at all. He only bull hunts, and his property is a sanctuary. He's only got 40 acres, and he's surrounded by timber and neighbors who, he said, some of them will pound everything. But that guy manages to shoot a booner every year. Every year. He's in central Wisconsin. Every year. And and I just kind of giggle. I'm just like, you know, and he doesn't, he's not on social media, doesn't want anybody to know. Probably better that way. Yeah, it is. Well, and there you go. It's because social media, will bury you it, it, it and that is one thing i we i definitely want to touch on and we'll touch on to on the on the voters and hunting and all of these things yep, that are gonna yep, yep. you know that are gonna that we'll touch base on but you know the the problem it all starts with all of us outdoor industry people all us hunters all of us outdoorsmen we need to unite and not drive each other away and not judge everybody for every single living thing that another guy does. And social it, media ruins that. that oh, that's the it, root of it all. It ruins the hunting. And I got my opinions on a lot of things. And they're my and opinions. Yeah. My opinion. I, it, just because I refuse to do something doesn't mean you can't. I don't care. Yeah. It's not me. It's just whatever drives my my passion in, in this whole thing is helping people kill good deer. I don't even last year I hunted, I think it was four states, three or four states. I yeah. never fired a shot. Yeah. I never even fired a shot. And yeah. and you know what? I was good about it. I didn't because I vicariously live through my customers and I'm blessed that way. I think when it starts like in the middle, about the third week of September, I almost get a video, a video, a, a post, a, a, a email, a text, a call from somebody that uses our stuff. That oh my god, look at what I shot! Or look what my daughter shot! Or look yeah. what my wife shot! Or you know, and I'm just like you know, you know that that's what drives me, and it makes my life a lot better. So it's the simple things in life, you know. Got home and 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 enjoying the outdoors, and I think Brent, this is gonna this is gonna help so many people and we're going to encourage as we get going into this for people to email us questions and let's ask questions because what i and there's no dumb questions and trust me i talk to people on the phone every day every day and some of them i don't even you know to to some people it would be very simple but they're asking because they don't know and that's what this podcast is for this is this will be a place if, if you're listening out there and you have a simple question, check this podcast. I mean, this is where we're going to lay down step by step by step food plots, management, all these different things, timber stand improvement, how to hunt your property, how to access your property, all these simple things. Let's break down all this stuff in a simple form so that if you're an idiot, you know, and you've never hunted before in your life, you've never planted a food plot in your life, we're going to give you the step by step instructions as to how to have the most success. Are there certain, you know, are there, are there certain steps that 
could you skip and still probably have success and get lucky? Yes. But let's face it, in the long run, I'm going to kick you in the butt. You know, you brought yeah. up you brought up soil tests, and that's something I wanted to transition into. We're going to do a little bit of a, a series, you know, these next couple of podcasts, food plotting for dummies. What's the number one step before you put a seed in the ground, before anything? It's, it's that soil test. That soil test is the plan, the how-to, what do you need to do to have success? You can only control so much when it comes to mother nature, rain, and all those other things. But the, 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 the food plots, in order to have success consistently, if you're not doing that soil test, you're setting yourself you know, up for failure. You know, and, and that's funny you say that, Brett. And so many people are like, oh, no, I've, I've been farming for a long time. And, you know, I'll just. Oh, yeah. it, sh- it should be good. I'll throw I get triple this all 19 that. down it, and it, we'll be it fine. It should be good. Yeah, yeah, it should be fine. Yeah. And I get this, you know, I ask, and, and, and people that know me and my customers know, if you're going to call me or text me, one of the first questions I'm going to ask you is, what is your pH? That's mm-hmm. the first thing I'm asking. And they'll be like, well, I took a soil test five years ago, yeah. and I threw some I threw some lime down. Okay, and that's fine. That's great. But where's your pH at now? Because I said, you know, you just nailed something that is probably my thing that drives me is you can do everything right, but Mother Nature always wins. Yeah, absolutely. So you better you better if and if you do everything right and Mother Nature cooperates, you are going to go groceries like no tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And if you don't, it's not gonna. You're gonna struggle. And, and and I try to relay that to the customer, and I, and to our people that call me or text me. I need help. I don't know what I'm. I get this all the time. I get a call almost at least one or two calls a day. I don't know what I'm doing. Can you help me? And I'll take the time, put my earbuds in, and I'm working, and I will answer him or her the best I can and explain what I recommend. And I'm not sitting there and saying, you know, you know, you, and I, and I, when I do my seminars, I told you this, if it works for you and it's been working for you and I don't do it that way, then continue to do what works for you. There, there's I'm no absolute, all- there's no absolute in deer hunting where it's always this way is the only yes. way to do something. But right. there are certain ways that, you know, tend to work better. Better odds. Yeah. Give better, you better your odds. odds. Yeah, yes. exactly. Yes, yes, yes. And I, I like I said, I think this is going to work out great. But, uh, you know, like I said, it's it, it, Nice that we can get an introduction going, and we're gonna, you know, and I'm talking with Kristen Armitage. She is, you know, she does all our blogging and stuff, and we, we we just talked about this a little bit before we went on live. I said, you know, she's got a lot of ideas and a lot of people emailing questions, or you know, and then we talk about canopy and, and awards, and there's so many variables, and there's so many, and and you know, and people sit there. Well, it you know, and, and another thing too is I get this too. Well, I did this one year and it worked great. The next year, it didn't do it since. Welcome to farming. I, I, you know, I, yes. I mean, I can't, you know, did you fertilize? Well, I never did the first year. I, I, what am I supposed to tell you? I, I don't yeah. know. And it depends what you're planting. I mean, certain plants are going to create their own nitrogen. And yep. you, you got to, you just, there's, there's a lot of things. I, go. I know. I know. <laughs> and it's, it, I know. And I just get, sometimes I get uber frustrated but uh and you know, we can't would, expect everybody to know everything about everything and just right. assume that just because we might this is stuff that we're going to break down for people and like i said i wanted to the, the couple things that i wanted to the, the main thing that i wanted to at least get get done in this podcast i wanted to get that introduction done let people know who we were and we kind of went over that but if people want to follow along with us step by step week by week as this food plot you know food plot for dummies is what we'll call it um as we start this off, if people are, are want to take that first step this week, go out, dig up some soil, get your probe out, get a shovel out, get your soil test done, send it in, and then we can go week to week. I mean, obviously, we're depending where you are in the country, we're still a little bit early to be planting these fall fruit plots. Very early. Very and, early. And that's a different topic because how many guys yeah. have you seen got their food oh, already? Yeah. People, read the bag. Ask, yeah. ask Doug. Yeah. Send, ask, yeah. There's a time you got to plant these. You know, I tell people, it says right in the back, late summer, you know, early fall, okay? Um, late summer is not April, okay? Right. It, it, it's not even May, yeah. okay? And it's really not even June. No. Um, but, you know, it, and, and I understand some customers, you know, I can only get in there at this time before they, far, they plant it with a farmer, whatever, and I get it. There, yeah. there are circumstances for everything. 
but you got to remember you are growing garden product garden right. crops and most of them are 60 day 80 at max yeah crops. and you so, want that you want that peak to line up with with the perfect time of your hunting season if it peaks before you can never use it you wasted time and money yeah and i tried to explain that you know and and and, and well there's no yeah. and i you know i and i get it i get it and like i said i i you know i struggle with it some days there's some days i'm like oh people really so maybe, but, maybe we maybe we can reach somebody right now if you're if you're breaking ground and you're wondering what to plant plant nothing don't plant if you're right now if you're if you're looking to plant a food plot wait don't plant yes, it wait 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 and, and if you didn't do a soil test just go to hornybuckseed.com go there down go. there where it says egg source click on them chris will mail them to your house yeah. they will mail them to your house go on there read the directions pick out in there in the sheet what do you want to plant okay it's really simple very just, simple just click on it it's free to mail it back in it yep. costs you i think it's 18 dollars a sample i'm pretty sure 18. It, it's well spent it'll tell you what your dirt needs verbatim to yeah. grow that crop and I, I just did it i just did it i i moved so for a little background of people i used to i used to live close to doug and doug's up in northern wisconsin i moved to west kentucky how many of those soil uh, the the soil tests and samples have you given out? You know, in in the past, I got a stack of them, and it's what I had. So what I did is I I, I did exactly that. I sent them. What's the name of the company that that you sent? Egg Source. To? Egg yes, Source. Egg Source. Is it up in Bondowell or where's it? Yes. At? Yeah. Well, there are, there's a couple different uh, areas, but they're they do most of the sampling and, and testing is out of Bondowell, Wisconsin. Okay. Yeah. So I'm down in West Kentucky right now, and I had a bunch of these, and I, so I had a buddy, and he was dead set on. Oh, there's so, he just bought the property. And he's like, ah, oh, they used to plant food plots here. It's probably pretty good. Like, he's, he's probably yeah. He, he's getting <laughs> he's getting into hunting and the, and the managing you know the managing side of, of things. And I was like, dude, trust me, it's going to cost us eighteen dollars, and we're going to have the plan as to what we need to do. It's going to be on paper. Um, and so, like I said, sent it in to it's egg source, right? Yes, egg yeah. Source. Sent it in for eighteen dollars, and the pH was good. We got lucky. We had, we had a pH of like six point eight. You know, it was pretty good, and and that reminds me of another topic. I had a, uh, I had a customer out in Missouri, and he was planting. He had like clover going for for years and years and years, and he I told him about soil tests, and he he wasn't a farmer. He was just like, what do you mean soil test? And then he sent me. I'm not gonna give names, but the guy gave me his. I, I told you about this already. He he sent me all of his soil tests, and I saw the pH was like in the fours. And he's like, so so what what can what can we plant? And I'm like, nothing. <laughs> We got some work to do, and this is how you do it. Um, which his pH was super low. Obviously, he's got to use a bunch of lime, and that's another topic. Lime takes yeah. time to break down, and I'm not going to sit here and plug products all day. But you guys got that liquid lime, and that liquid yeah. lime breaks down when you Instantly. need it, instantaneously yeah, when you need yeah. it. Because if you if you were to put down pelletized or granular lime, that takes what does it take? Six, like six months to actually break down. Uh, uh, six to eight months to really do a, a thorough breakdown, and where the where the you know when you sit there and you put on a liquid lime, it works instantaneous. So it actually co you know it, it coincides with your fertilizer. So it allows your root structure to absorb the nutritional value. Otherwise, it, your your tap roots are not going to be able to bring in the fertilization and the fertilization. And you know it's gonna either leach or it's just yeah. gonna sit there because the yeah. plant can't utilize it. And you know you can dump a pile of fertilizer on a plant, but if it if that root structure is not gonna be able to absorb it, right. hey, you lost. Yeah. You and know. I'm, and yeah. And I, I'm I'm gonna cut you off because we're we're gonna get into those we're gonna get into those steps and we'll do a step by step thing. Um, but like I said, if, if that's something, if you guys know you got bad pH, look into, into Doug's liquid lime product that they got on their website. Cause at least that'll, that'll give you instant, basically satisfaction. That'll, that'll help change things a lot quicker than the granular or the, or the pelletized lime. So that's something to keep in mind. But if, if we had to preach something to, to somebody, you know, wrapping this podcast up on the day, I guess, like I said, we did our intro, but if we had to preach something, do your soil test people and yes. figure out where your soil is at, because that's the number one step. If you want to grow a good food plot, grow big deer, have food year round, that's where it starts. It's simple in cutting corners. Same thing with my buddy the other day. He, he's like, well, I don't want to, he didn't want to not pay for it, but it saved us money in the long run because now we didn't go and buy a bunch of fertilizer and things like that. So it's going to save people in the long run. And with that being said, like, that's the first step that I would ask people to go out and do right now. And I mean, that's well, like I said, you, you, you kind of nailed it too. You know, you sit there and you look at, uh, and I had a customer 
stop in uh, last week here, and he came over with a pretty big trailer and big pallets full of stuff on the back of his trailer. Yep. Come to get seed. And I said, uh, what do you got in the back there? He goes, oh, I just went and picked up all my pelletized line. And I said, oh, my God, that's a pretty big trailer. He goes, yeah, I got three ton on there, you know. And he said, and he showed me his bill. His bill was 500 and some dollars. Mm -hmm. And I looked at him, I'm like, ugh. And he came in the warehouse, I give him see, we start talking, and he goes, hey, what's this stuff in this white stuff? I said, that's liquid lime. And he says, uh, the heck is that? And I says, well, I said, I use it religiously. I said, it's equivalent to almost a ton of lime per gallon. He goes, what does that cost? It's $45. Wait a minute, he said. I don't get it. This is $45, and I just paid 100 and some dollars. I said, listen, you know, what you got there is fine. You know, the problem you're going to have with that is you're not going to reap the benefit of it this year. But you will in years to come, so don't mm. think that you you know you've lost. But I said, if you want something to get you going this year, this is what's going to give you instant gratification. And I said, go spray it and get it out. You know, it's like explain to them how to spray it because men don't read directions, and we'll get into exactly. all that. Exactly. Podcasts. But um, he's like, from now on, he says, you know. And then I had customers that have been using it now for the last couple of years, and they're like, this is a no brainer. This is an old, he said, man, we noticed the biggest difference in our deer and our, in our, they, they like it. I got guys that just go spray it under alfalfa and the deer will eat it mm -hmm. next to where, you know, where they didn't spray. They'll yeah. eat everything they sprayed before they'll eat what they didn't spray. So if that isn't telling you something, you know, I know that, the, you know, they crave the lime and they need that calcium and it all kind of works to coincides together. Yeah. You know, it's just all part of it, you know, but this is all... This is all things that we can discuss as we go. One hundred percent. You know, and I'm and I'm all about you know customers, you know, getting out, reaching out, and we will have like you know like Brett said, we'll have our guests on. I think that's great, and we'll have people. And I got a lot of people that I know for a fact we could talk to that will help you, you know, the public out as well, yeah. and 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 give another opinion of what they have and how they have it and things like that. I think it'll be fun. Yeah, and like Doug said, I mean, we got some some big name people that a lot of people are going to recognize these names. And some of these people are going to be way off on one end of a tangent. And we, I think we, as people, we, we got to just be able to take it all in and not kind of like the hunting thing, not judge somebody for what they're going to say, take it in, take it for what it's worth. And if you don't agree with it, that's fine. You know, we can like, like shooting big deer versus small deer. Some people are going to shoot what they want to shoot and yeah, don't make whatever makes don't, you happy. Exactly. Doesn't matter. So we're going to have a lot of people on, um, you know, that are going to hit on those topics other than that, I guess wrapping this podcast up, you know, we're going on probably 30, 40 minutes. If people um, could like and subscribe to this, this podcast, that's going to help us out. Share this podcast. Like I said, this is our first one. There's going to be glitches. There's going to be errors. So bear with us. We're going to make this thing, you know, better as time goes on. So we're going to be sharing this on both um, Doug's uh, Horny Buckseed uh, Facebook page, probably all the social media platforms will be putting links and stuff like that everywhere. Same with mine at Whitetail Land Management Services. And hopefully we're going to get an audio version of this podcast up. So if you're riding in the car and you want to listen to this stuff, um, we can get that rolling for you guys. So just bear with us. Give us a little bit of time. Um, otherwise, you can be able to get this this podcast you know, on YouTube as soon as we get that uploaded. And we're going to be hopefully getting these done every week, right? Is that what you think? Right, yeah. Yeah, we're going to plan. I, I mean, even in some weeks, uh, you know, maybe we can even hit on a couple of different ones during the week if it works out, you know, that we have time. But I'll make time for this because this is going to actually help the public. Yep. And it's going to help, you know, me as a whole, too, because this gives people another form for them to go out and, and, and research and learn some things, too. So it'll work out great. Absolutely. All right. You got anything else? No. Or it should be golden. Look forward to the weeks coming up. And uh, I'm going to be looking forward to hearing from people and then coming back and reading their questions and then we can answer them. And that's uh, another for, thing for the public. If, if people got some questions or want to have topics, go ahead and, and, and put them in the comments, you know, whether, whether it's on YouTube or on these Facebook pages or anything like that. If you got some topics you want us to hit on, throw them in the comments and we'll get to them. But other than that, that is, I guess, slightly part one to food plotting for dummies. Go get those soil tests done guys. Um, that's what we got for you. So that's a wrap. So that's podcast number one, plotting for success. And uh, stay tuned, guys. We'll catch you guys next week. All right. See ya.